Hey there, Benders! Welcome to Versus Shorts, the series where I take two characters and set them against each other in open combat. Today, we will pit Toph, the earthbending prodigy, against Azula, the firebending madwoman. For this video, I will be observing these characters as they appear in The Last Airbender, the TV series and comic books. As a special note, this will be an observation of these characters as adolescents, rather than their elder years. As physical combatants, Azula takes the cake against Toph. No, not just because Toph is blind. And since you can't see, I should tell you, I'm rolling my eyes. But because Azula is a little wrecking ball of destruction as a physical opponent, even out fighting the Kyoshi warriors purely on the merits of her hand-to-hand -hand martial skill. Azula's dedication to her physical craft went so far, she even filed her nails to claws. The only one who seemed to exceed Azula's skill as a pure physical opponent was Tai Li, an extraordinary gymnast in her own right. But when looking at their direct confrontation as hand-to-hand -hand martial artists in Smoke and Shadow, Azula came out on top. Azula's physical abilities, even as they relate to Toph, culminated on the Day of Black Sun, as Aang openly admits, I can't pin her down! She's too quick! And neither could Toph, even when using her earthbending against Azula. Now, of course, Toph definitely contends with Azula when throwing bending in the mix, but for this specific round, under the parameters of physical attributes and abilities, Toph has no answer for Azula. Azula gets the edge for her physical abilities. In terms of raw ability, Toph and Azula are extremely close. Each has time and practice with her respective element, with Toph already competing with the likes of King Bumi, and Azula already approaching the likes of Ozai. But I would argue that Toph has a deeper touch with her personal element because of her condition. Because Toph is blind, she supplemented her disability with a seismic sense, able to see even better than someone with proper sight, so long as she and her opponent were on Earth. Seismic Sense gives her a 360-degree viewing angle, giving her an edge, especially against groups. Her Seismic Sense is not infallible, however, as we've seen from her fight against the Dai Li. Still, it was an extremely useful ability within a fight, especially against other Earthbenders. Azula was a beast with fire, even mastering its unique variant, Lightning. But Azula did not live and breathe her element the same way Toph did. She would never have the same touch, that deep connection. But the scary thing about Azula is that she, unlike most firebenders, paired offense with defense, making her both hard to hit and hard to evade. Though I believe Toph has more raw ability with her element, I do not think that definitively gives her the edge against Azula, including her use of metal. After all, we have seen the two indirectly contend with each other a handful of times. In the 8th chapter of Book 2, Azula easily obliterates one of Toph's walls, and in the 11th chapter of Book 3, Azula subverts Toph's earthbending attempts. Seismic Sense also bears weakness against those who do not keep to the ground like most earthbenders. It was difficult for Toph to pinpoint Aang's location when using earthbending, and Azula has a similar ability to momentarily glide with fire jets, which could hinder Toph's sight. And unlike Kuvira, Toph has not yet perfected metal bending, using metal more like earth bending in large quantities, rather than with pinpointed whips and sheets that could, in my opinion, subvert a swift opponent like Azula. As comparative benders, Toph is more impressive, inventing a new form of bending and enhancing earth bending with a new sight. In terms of accolades, she has more clout. Azula was special in her own right with her signature blue flames and lightning but I think the best representation of their powers comes from a visual cue. In the Lost Adventures comics, Toph is able to contend with King Bumi, who at his height, single-handedly liberated Omashu with great strength. And then, when we compare Ozai's lightning bending to Azula's, we see a pretty stark difference. Even with Sozin's comet, Azula did not match the sheer violence of Ozai's lightning. So relative to a top-tier firebender, she was not exactly on par. Of course, this does not exactly apply to fighting an earthbender, but I have to give the edge to one of the characters. And with that, purely on the merits of their bending abilities, the slight edge goes to Toph and her respective use of her element.
With two individuals that have such natural raw power, coupled with practice application of said abilities, we have to break it down a little more. What I like to do is to look at each opponent's capabilities as defensive and offensive fighters. How well can each fighter defend themselves, and how capable are they of ending a fight? For an earthbender like Toph, defense is pretty significant and strong, throwing up large rock walls or encasing oneself in rock or metal. But we have seen Azula push through such defenses, once in direct confrontation with Toph, and again in a head-to-head -head contest with Aang. For Azula, her defenses come in two fronts. One part is her physical ability to evade her opponent, which is second to almost none, as highlighted in the first round. The second is her elemental ability to defend against her opponent. In particular, she was able to produce an energy ball that defended against the combined efforts of Aang and his crew. Though to me, this feels more like plot-induced stupidity than anything else. Also, one can argue that Azula was facing a group who was running on no sleep. But even without a grand showing of defense, Azula has still shown that she is capable of defending against Earth. In terms of offense, Toph has the benefit of not being surprised so long as Azula keeps to the ground. But we have also seen that if Azula gives a concentrated effort, Toph cannot entomb her because she is too quick. So Toph would need to use other methods to overcome Azula, such as more directed shots with Earth. But I'm not confident these methods could stand up to Azula's dynamic use of fire and lightning while she is on the move. What made Azula so deadly in combat was not just her physical agility or her bending prowess, but her astute intellect. A master manipulator, an excellent strategist, and an educated mind, Azula was truly one of the most well-versed firebenders of her time. There can even be a case made for Azula throwing off Toph's mentality through taunts, as we've seen from the past. I'll roll your whole head! She's just baiting you again! To me, only Sokka was appeared to Azula as a strategist, not to say Toph was not a smart fighter, as we've seen from her first fights against the underground earthbenders, she knows how to use her environment to her advantage. But relative to Azula, she may have good tactics, but she does not have the same strategic leverage. Azula gets the edge for her tactical abilities. If these two badass benders ever met in open conflict, without the Black Sun, without extreme fatigue, without any outside circumstances that would break up the engagement, who would come out on top? Let's set up this fight. Let's say it takes place in downtown Republic City. The following is a hypothetical explanation of the possible outcomes. The early fight should belong to Toph. After all, she has the ability to outright stomp her opponents with earthbending whether that's disturbing their balance or completely entombing them. Azula can end the fight early with lightning, but this is less likely. She did not often open with lightning, and it took time to generate for any form of lethality. In terms of likelihoods, Toph is more likely to take the advantage here with a 2 to 1 advantage. Yet I don't see this matchup ending in the opening seconds. The times we have seen Toph disable Azula was while the Earthbender made no move to evade or was unaware of her presence. When Azula was actively engaged with Toph, remaining light on her feet, even the swiftness of Aang's airbending could not tag her. In the mid-fight, Azula would take advantage of Toph's blindness, either by taunting Toph for her disability and compromising Toph's mental sharpness, or by using her fire jets to keep out of Toph's sight. Considering we have never seen Toph negatively affected by taunts, I find the latter scenario more likely. Unlike an earthbender, who Toph could constantly keep tabs on due to the nature of their rooted bending, she would not be able to easily pinpoint Azula's firebending, especially if Azula uses her fire jets to maneuver around Toph. But even with this advantage, Azula is not home free. Toph has shown an ability to contend with Aang while he used an air spout to stay afloat. Granted, this was more a case of blind luck, pun intended, as Toph was not targeting Aang directly, using her earthbending like a machine gun, spraying, and praying. But this would still be a method she would attempt against Azula, who I feel is even more likely to get hit than Aang was, as fire jets have less evasive flexibility than an airbending spout. There are also other scenarios where Azula could burn Toph's feet, effectively making her completely blind. It wouldn't take long for Azula to realize, even without prep or prior knowledge to Toph's seismic sense, that Toph relied on her feet to see, and Azula would jump on that advantage as soon as she could. 
the mid fight will be tough with a 3 to 2 advantage to Azula. Toph's earthbending defenses would be blasted through by lightning or firebending. Toph's seismic sense would be disturbed by Azula's light footed bounce and fire jets. Toph could retaliate with her masterclass earthbending and would not easily be taken down. But Azula has more tools at her disposal that specifically can be used against the blind bandit. In the late fight, Azula would keep up her light footed assault, which would continue to hinder the seismic sense of Toph. One solution for this is Toph's ability to cover herself in metal armor, as she did against Fire Nation soldiers during Sozin's Comet. But of course, the issue with such armor is that it's quite susceptible to Azula's lightning. Or is it? And if an electrical current happens to be moving over a hollow metal container, like a can or a box or even a welded coat of armor, the current won't reach the inside of the container. So Toph's metal armor would be an effective counter to Azula, according to scientific theory. But the television show would have us believe otherwise, with a literal Faraday cage scenario in Legend of Korra. You four retrieve the Avatar. Do not underestimate her. Electrocute the box to knock her out before you open it. This suggests to the audience that the Equalist would have been successful if Korra did not sling herself from the top of the cage. In reality, she was more likely to be unhurt because the Equalist tasers would have been grounded to the cage, the most metallic object, and thus, the most attractive object for an electric current, instead of into Korra's body. In the late fight, I see Azula taking a 2-0 offensive advantage, but she would ultimately be deadlocked based on scientific theory. There are certainly scenarios where Azula could tag Toph before a metal suit comes into play, and it's unlikely that Toph would know where the lightning strike would come from. But if Toph does manage to use the metal around downtown Republic City, encasing herself in protective armor, there are two scenarios that could happen, and that depends entirely on the creators of the show. One scenario is that Toph would be unaffected and continue fighting, possibly even disabling Azula with metal. The second is that Azula's lightning would be super effective against Toph's metal armor, and the engagement would end there. And ultimately, based on the rules established by the lore, rather than our own real-world science, the likely scenario would go to Azula, who should effectively knock Toph out in her suit. But of all the scenarios, I see this likely ending in the mid-fight before the conundrum that is the metal suits and lightning comes into play. Azula is an expert at uncovering the weakness of others. For Toph, that was her blindness, which Azula would exploit through her superior, light-footed physicality and firebending supplement. Toph could contend purely on the merits of her pure tenacity, but that tenacity would not quite match Azula's ferocity and astute intellect for a likely majority. And after a 6-10 advantage, Azula, the mad princess, the firebending prodigy, would be the most likely victor in this contest. Of course, this is all my opinion based on the lore of Avatar. Do you agree that Azula would take the majority, or do you believe the blind bandit is the most likely victor? Let me know in the comments below, or vote for who you think would win in the top right corner. And of course, peace, love, and remember, be water my friends.